Let's talk about identification. This is for emergencies and when you trailer out. However you identify your horse or put something on your horse that has your telephone number and information, you always want to make it easy to find. We have a wonderful horse outside, so we're going to just go wander on out and look at this horse. And then I'm going to want another volunteer, two volunteers. So start thinking about who's willing to step out of their zone. So you can start now. You're, you can be really mean and pick somebody. I don't know. We'll figure out. We're going to go outside. This is going to be very quick. Hi, I'm Carla. Carla. Carla and Carol. Big hand for, not too big. Not too big. Here we have magical, mystical Merlin. Laura has been nice enough to bring him. Clearly, he is a very energetic, very spooky horse who's ready to bolt. Or he has bolted. Either his rider has fallen off and he's taken off and now somebody's found him. Ah, my leg. Ah, my leg. <laughs> we get to tie her to the saddle and bring her back. So he shows up, there's no rider. Or we have an emergency and Laura has tied the gear in bef when we got the weather warning. So during the evacuation, he's already identified. Now, one of you, come on over here. Who is the least of the horse experienced? How long have you been riding? I don't know, 50 years. How long have you been riding? Same. Oh, geez, always. OK. I'll be the newbie, though. Find the pinkish gold dog tag with the cream colored string. Go ahead. I thought it was mane. Nope. That's the bright yellow. So this is the green twine. We want cream, cream colored twine, like natural color. Oh, okay. oh Merlin, easy boy. <laughs> easy. Everybody be quiet, he's spooking. <laughs> easy, Merlin. Whoa. Okay, hold on. How's it going there? You're free. I've tortured you enough. <laughs> Merlin, come back. Something people do a lot, and I don't know if any of you do it. I used to, and I don't know what I was thinking. Merlin, would you come back, please? I'm great. I'm going to turn it around. Okay. Merlin, ho, send. Ma. I won't make you speak into my microphone. A lot of people think about tying ID tags into the horse's tail. Look. Looky there. How hard was that to find? A lot of times, these ID tags disappear and nobody can even find them and they don't know they're there. You would be surprised at how many people do this. Another reason you don't want to do this, besides not even knowing that it's there, is if you do have to evacuate or somebody gets your horse that's not experienced with horses, the last thing you want to do is have somebody around, Merlin, I took, I took a shower, jeez, is have somebody who's not as experienced with horses going to this back end of the horse. Because chances are they're not going to walk up as slowly and they're going to move fast or the horse might not even know they're there. Then you have two injured people, and one of those injured people is like 20 miles away because Merlin just kicked him. Again, you would be so surprised how many people do this. Emergency evacuations or when you're out riding, you always want to have some kind of identification on the horse. So tell me, why do I have this braided in and close up to his head? Probably so people will see it. Talk louder. Oh, Here, well, wait. So talk, can... talk into my chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not, not the person. That's not awkward. <laughs> so people can see it. So people can see it. That's right. Why else? Easy access. Easy access. Who said that? Yay. This, there's two reasons this is here. It's more visible. Yes, hello. Hello. I love you too. I'm taking you home. Um, it's more visible. I'm using bright colored string because that's more visible. Laura braided this in up and down so it won't pull out when it's braided in. And it's close to the front, more visible, but also if somebody catches your horse or it's during evacuation and you need to look at that ID, you have control of the head. Close up here means you can hold on to the halter. It's easier to control the horse. If you have this back here, the further back you're going, 
Now, if Merlin were to be like super reactive, move away, Merlin, move away. It's really hard for me to do this. Thank you, Merlin. You can stop now. You're so good. He's like, what? Okay. You're so good. I love you. You come home with me. For me, the very best form of ID, and I literally, I get nothing for this, I keep this on 24-7, is the fetlock band. You can read this, whether it's on the outside. This, so by the way, this is six years old, this thing. The color fades a little bit, but can you guys read the telephone number there? I probably could with my glasses. Don't, don't write it down. I know you're all going to want to call me afterwards and be like, oh my god, you're so great. Or call me and go, don't ever talk in public again. This stays on my horse 24-7. I wear it over my hoof, my easy boots. I wear it when I go out trail riding. I have it at home. When I know that I'm going to go trail riding, I actually have two. One has my number on it. One has a friend's number on it. So that way, if something happens, OK, do I have time for a quick story or am I done? OK. I got separated from my horse in a canyon. I was riding by myself. My friend calls me. I have her telephone number because I have two on. Hello. My friend calls me and says, hey, what you doing? I'm like, well, I was riding, but you know. <laughs> he moved one way and I didn't. And she says, well, I know where your horse is. Some guy caught my horse right before he got out of the canyon and was holding on to him for me. So I knew where to find my horse. My friend knew that I was OK. We were reunited. And everything was good. I didn't get hurt. If I would have gotten hurt, I would have had my phone on and my little in reach to help somebody find me. But I didn't. We got separated. We were connected because we had identification on. If we didn't have identification on, he wouldn't have known who I was, where the horse belonged. The horse would have wound up at Santa Barbara Animal Services, and they would have taken great care of him because he's awesome, right? Yes. That's why I wear these. When I go camping or I'm at a facility because I've gone through an emergency evacuation, I have a collar. And the collars are inside. They Velcro around the horse's neck, and they're pressure tested. How many people have seen duct tape go around the horse's neck, and they write in marker on the duct tape? Yeah, it, that is a horrible, horrible thing. That horse gets caught up. It may not let go. And then you have a dead horse. I mean, I hate to say that, but that's something else I've seen happen. Collar, pressure tested, has windows so you can write your personal information and keep it inside this collar. Stays on when we camp, if I get evacuated, or even if I'm out trail riding tied to the trailer. That said, this is the expedited version of the clinic. Again, all this information I gave to you today, hopefully you find it useful when you're out trail riding. You will find that if you implement some of these things, that if there is an emergency, the key thing, because you have planned, is instead of riding and running around and being crazy because somebody's gotten hurt or your horse has run off or whatever happens, you had a plan. You planned ahead of time, which in the end is going to make you panic less, believe it or not. And when you panic less, you can handle the situation better. That applies to whenever anything happens out on the trail. That applies during disasters. Because you've planned, when you have this gear set up, whether it's trailering out or natural disaster, you have it set up. You have planned. And by planning, it has made you more prepared for that incident that you hope never occurs.